Uh, anything like being a beginner, huh? Uh, I like Jack Nicholas. This is Jack part two, I think you're, you're the second Jack. Jack Nicholas uh, says, as a beginner, I've painted my share of dead paintings. That is, those that fail to capture the light. I agree with that. That's, that's one version of a dead painting. <laughs> I've learned there are many ways to capture the light, such as value, color, texture, paint density, and edges. Are there other ways to capture the light? Uh, is there a way to think about the light from an impressionist point of view compared to the academic painter that I might be missing? And this is apropos, of course, of uh, our most recent uh, <clears throat> contribution that basically dedicated itself to Sargent and the uh, Impressionist imaginative painting. Uh, my response to him, he sent me an email, was, would you send me an I said, would you send me an example of your work, which he's done. And, uh, and then uh, he's, now he said, I attached a, f a few I thought were not capturing the light well. I drew them first by painting an outline through observation. He's just talking about his method. I'm not going to show you that. Just going to show you the stuff. Then painted them using a layered process. I appreciate your time and your excellent videos. Keep in mind, I've only been learning. I think he's asking for mercy there. But Jack, <laughs> keep in mind, I've only been learning oil painting for about a year. No previous art experience. And some of these are earlier in my training, online training. All right. <clears throat> so let's just have a look, uh, Jack, and um, see what you're up to. Um, Usually this stuff is pretty straightforward. I mean to, at the end of this, actually make some, lay out some pointers for you all or some, have some of the points of discussion that are standard to, to understanding getting light effects. Yeah, and most of you would probably agree that uh, Jack's picture below is much less lit than the one above. He's, he's uh, sending that big for that reason. And uh, so here's, the, here's his question is what makes that happen? What makes the light happen? What, what am I missing? You know, one of the problems with um, uh, glaze work is that it's very beautiful frequently, but if you don't know how to get keep the light alive, there's a tendency for it to drag you down. And I'm th assuming this is, when he says layered, I'm thinking he must have painted uh, some sort of the grisaille or something. That I wouldn't want to put words in your mouth, but, um, but uh, unless you paint that grisaille really light, there'll be a tendency, it'll be very difficult for, for these next layers to do anything but get darker yet. So. But that's just not anything I know firsthand much, except, I mean, I know it firsthand from my experience, but I don't play with it in any depth. So I'm not the guy to ask about how to make your light effects happen more beautifully. If he is doing, uh, or Jack, if you are doing a, um, uh, a grisaille painting, I mean, a, um, a glaze type painting. Anyway, let's just keep it really simple. Uh, you make your point, Jack. You understand what makes value, what makes this happen, and the values is the key thing, right? If you don't have your values right, uh, light doesn't work out. But undirected values, in other words, if they're not directed to getting the light, don't help either. So you have to have a concept of the thing, as Ang would say, fixed in your mind and eye. And now we're talking about a concept of the light, fixed in your mind and eye, and then you have to go get them. And uh, we set up categories. Everybody does. There's the darkest dark and lightest light. What is that? So um, in Jack's picture, he's almost done that. His dark is dark, which is these two guys here, maybe a hint of this, really don't much differentiate themselves as they should from middle values. Um, so, but which sets up the question of what we're doing at the beginning. You know, when you first put colors around, you're actually setting them down to see whether that group of colors will actually produce this effect. That's an opportunity you get in Impressionism. You don't get anywhere else, okay? Uh, now, you could have done preliminary studies in black and white for a grisaille and actually managed the value system pretty good. And I don't know what that will contribute to you as you glaze along. And I'm not saying you should do it <clears throat> painting over it, but you certainly would be able to at least do the values portion of the study that produces the light. Um, but let me see if I can just uh, talk about a couple things. Uh, so if we say the darkest dark is here, is that the lightest light or is that the lightest light? And what you have to do is watch out for your assumptions. You know, there's always an assumption that you know, this is white and therefore it's light or something like that. And or the assumption is that that automatically that's the lightest light. This couldn't possibly be any lighter. Um, but that's one of those places where you can blur your eyes, pop your eyes a lot. There's a bunch of ways to look at nature itself. And uh, you can begin to isolate uh, the major masses. But it's very plain in this picture that the 
the biggest mass of serious light is right across the entire face of this base of this painting, and it's not much different from this one. So right away at the beginning, you didn't differentiate, you didn't unify these. So this is classification of values. These are the two main lights. And you could argue, of course, that the highlights are a portion of that as well. The highlights on the top of this. I'm going to go get my laser beam so we you guys can see better. Uh, so that's the first thing. It's your lightest light and your darkest aren't, aren't established in this picture, right? They don't seem to be doing effectually what they're doing, supposed to be doing. So that's just values, right? And so what you do with values is you say, let's see, if, well, this value here, these, these two as the light, and this is the dark, and, and then you start talking about, with a blurred eye, the big, huge middle tone that goes across, say, this whole thing. And you say to yourself, will that set produce my light? Will it begin to produce the world that I'm talking about? Now, when you're a painter in color, that isn't all there is to the light. Intensity of color is a huge factor. And you can see that he's lost light by not having it. You, Jack, I'm going to say you. I'm going to go between you and, and he. Uh, have lost, you have no light effect here because you have no chroma, no intensity in the, uh, and you're not particularly far off. The value is a little bit off. There should be a little bit of a difference between this value and that one, but not a huge difference. And yet your intensity is so far off that you, you're losing light. Okay. And that same thing is happening in your reds down here. You know, oddly in a way you could say you have more light here than you should. You have much less light here than you should. <laughs> You know, but it's all a comparative thing. Um, in any case, you can see that the first thing is this value isn't light enough. Your class of values. Now, that's the next question is the class of values. So what happens is where this value meets this value, it has to produce a light effect, that light effect right there. So what I mean is dark meets light. This is value contrast with a certain kind of an edge, and it pops a light. Now, this is your most popping pop maybe, right? There's the contrast, there's the light, there's the, there's a sharp edge, right? Now you've got the same thing going on down here in nature. And you, ha and you have then once you put those in though, your job is then to compare the two, compare this one to this one. These are two of a kind, right? They are contrasts. That means that's value contrasts plus edge, okay? And that's the heart of an effect when you're talking just values, which is really what you are talking for the most part uh, when it comes to effects. That's why um, the tonalists like Sargent, early Sargent, could also get light effects um, <clears throat> without necessarily being an Impressionist, a, a Monet full-color Impressionist, and that's characteristic. The, um, uh, but so you have a very decisive value contrast here. So if you don't set those up and you make those works effectually, now you have to look at them and say, does that produce the effect? Does it pop? So this thing comes off the page. If you blur your eyes at these two things at once, right, you'll see that this one doesn't come off. This one flies off the page to your eyes, you know, where all this other stuff here sets relatively sets back, and this thing doesn't. This doesn't do it at all, right? It does not come to us. Uh, now, one of the things you've got to make sure you do is don't try to match values out there. Uh, don't try to match this. You, you probably won't. Depending on the light you have there, you may not be able to hit that value. So you may be stuck with this one, but you've got to produce the effect. And that's such a weak effect, you'd say that's not good enough yet, right? And another aspect of this course is the unity of the general values. And mostly you're not real far off on that. I mean, this value here is trying to pick a side. And it doesn't wind up, if you blow your eyes a lot, it winds up being a little more on the light side where you take this one and it's a little more on the middle tone side, right? Or the whole middle tone here goes, and this one go rather together, including all this stuff here, it all tends to the middle tone side. So um, you got, if you blur your eyes a ton, you gotta really blur a ton, close one eye, I recommend, and then blur the other one, let the other one just go down and down and down until you can't see almost anything. And then you'll see a really weak turn over here, and you'll see a more of a pop right here, and you'll see contrast with sharp edge right there. That's a serious one, that's a good one. And this is all information. If you can't get that light to sing, and you have to, you, I'd have to say you haven't quite tried, right? You haven't made it sing. You know, another thing you might want to consider as you're looking at paintings is you have to watch your painting until it does what this does. And it's not going to be literal. Remember, I'm saying that again and again. It's, but it's got to be very effectual. It's got to, you got to push the lights and push the darks. And, and then you have to push the uh, yellowness, by the way, of this. And by the way, understand everybody, when I'm looking at these, I'm assuming that these are exactly what he was looking at simultaneously, because that's what he sent me. Uh, that's what, if you're gonna have me look at one of these, you gotta have it, you really need to have them side by side, ideally. Even that is, nothing I'm doing is ideal that way. 
But we'll just pretend that this, if it were this, these are the areas that you'd work on. So, um, you know, there's several areas like right here where you can see the contrast right there. If you blur your eye at this one, you can't see contrast. In yours, I can see contrast right around this guy. But this value here, its relative lostness when you blur your eye tells you that this here should be darker. In relation to this, it should be closer in relation to this, right? Well, this lack of contrast says this should be darker in relation to this and or this should be lighter, right? By the way, if you don't have good light on your canvas, some of these things will tend to happen too. So you really have to have nice light in your canvas. So let's add something else to the equation, and that is intensity. Um, the intensity of the colors in here. You see that spot right there? There's another piece where you actually have the opportunity to create shadow, um, a contrast, and with a sharp edge. And that's, you'll see that things that produce light are just like that. There's a list, right? You can make a list. The, maybe the weakest one would be this one. I'm talking about with sharp edge. The softer edge ones do less. They still have to have their resonance. They still have to have, if you blow your eye, they have to have their difference, but they'll have a, uh, <clears throat> a buffer between them. But uh, we're talking in this painting here about that drama, that drama, weak one here, contrast-wise, but not sharp edge-wise. And then um, lesser ones, this one here, and then the lesser ones would be this contrast out here. And you'll see that to the, to the right of any dark, to the left or right of any dark, to the side of any dark, the, the, the value that isn't like it, the one that's producing the silhouette, will have a sense of a glow. And see how you put this down and you didn't give any sense of contrast that would produce that feeling that there's light on the wall, right? Another way of measuring this, by the way, is you can see certain things coming. If, as I said, if you blur your eye, this will come out of the painting at you, and so will this, and so will this tend to do that. This highlight will, by the way, too. That's just sheer contrast. And then at lesser and lesser degrees, so this will be sitting back a little more, and uh, certain other places will be sitting back a little more, and then you blow your eye more, and you'll see that some things don't show at all, right? And that's where I'm trying to get you to really do a nice job of losing things into the background. Make sure you take, make use of the lossness because you need the loss. If you put false lights in in places, then your light lights will have competition. And the, the lights are not just a product of what they do immediately by themselves, but it's that whole thing about the, um, the, the context. So if you have other poppers that shouldn't be in the picture, popping away too much, that'll weaken your, your first effect and you'll be, you'll be forcing yourself to get stronger and stronger and you can't get that much stronger, uh, perhaps. Uh, frequently, you can't even get that much stronger. So you're, like this spot right here, see that? That one you've really got to lose. You've got to lose that really, really nicely. The one down here is one of those you have that's relatively sort of okay. That one you have contrast. This one you have contrast, but you didn't sharpen the edge and it doesn't pop enough. That one doesn't pop enough. You can see it. And it doesn't glow with light immediately. When you see them side by side, just look to the side, you'll see them side by side. You can feel the difference in the glow. This has a higher glow. You know, this contrast creates a greater sense of glow on the light side. This one a little bit lesser. This one probably is a little more than this one, right? But that's what you're doing. You're trying to get that set of those strong guys set up to help you set it all up. Now remember, before you put any of this stuff down, your colors have to have life in them. So the, the general color value of this thing here has to have its, its warmness. And again, I'm assuming that these things would be the same. So you can just say, you learn your lesson anyway, even if I'm missing out on uh, the fact that, you know, this thing should have been a different color because the photograph did this to it or whatever. By the way, that's another reason. Don't send things that are so different. <laughs> anyway, all right. So uh, let's look at the second one just so we can uh, make sure I'm not leaving anything out. But I'm just saying, make sure whenever you do, get the full color of these things. Don't be thinking you can get away with the effect if you don't have all of it going on at once. And I'm talking about any of the effects. This warm on this light may do a different thing from this dead green on this dead white, you know. They may, they, you know, just assume that they will. Remember our world is just a world of value relations, but it's what they do where they meet. <laughs> well, it's value to value to value to value, value relations. And then it's what they do where they meet, producing contrast and light. And I'm gonna just call it light. That's why I think of it as light. And there's a relative degree of contrast and light. So it's the edge plus the contrast produces this thing called light, and I call it light effects, okay? And the panel is just full of little light effects here, little light effects there. 
and they have to be in order. They have to be related to each other. And that's why I say if you can actually get your imagination involved in this, you can see there's a forwardness to something and a re relative reticence of other things to come forward. Lostness goes way back, and semi-lostness stays back, and, and high contrast is prominent and comes to your eyes. Again, I recommend you read Hildebrand's The Problem of Form. If you can make out what he's saying, I think you'll find that valuable. Now, this is um, pretty evident if these two are actually, uh, if you were actually trying to paint that one on top, it seems surprising that you, that this one here does not look even plausibly like what you're aiming at. This is so gray, and this is so whited out white, so uh, that's hard to believe. Yet, on the other hand, this thing here, you're close enough in this thing to make me think that maybe, maybe you just made stuff up or you looked in. Again, I say you avoid the world of, of assumptions. You don't know what color that bear is locally doesn't mean a thing to you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Colors are often lost. You get bright light on a color, and it may it will turn it will lose lots of that color. So you might be surprised. But again, you can see you should be able to see in this one here what the lesson is, right? Look at this guy right here. Where is that for your picture? You didn't create any contrast here, right? So this is the same exact thing, right? You'd see I take you through the same thing. This this edge right here pops a light right there that's really strong in such a level that it's competitive with this. Just purely talking about values, you say, this is my light, and there's another one over here. You could talk about a spot or two of them over there. Then you could talk about your second level light, which might be this one. Maybe there's a third level light, which might be this possibly into all these guys, and then this one here, right? And that's, so that's four of them, and then your darkest dark would be this, and you'd add, say, this plus this plus this plus this, right? You should be able to see your system that in that organized way. And again, blurring your eye a little bit, you can make out which ones really stay together. When you're first laying it in, if you can keep it as a, as a three-value system, it might be easier for you. Again, I'm going to say to you that if this is really true, the lostness here, and I'm going to tell you this doesn't look true because there seems to be more backlight in that one than you have in this one. On the other hand, the shapes are the same, so I'm going to say maybe you missed, okay? So here you forced contrast that doesn't exist. That we, that's, very, very, that's, the, that's, that's on the opposite end of what you should do. Here you weaken contrast and you, laid, you didn't give me the sharpness that does exist. You didn't, you didn't power up this sense of light. Now I can only say you've got to contrast, 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 contrast. Remember in all these things, by the way, it's not, you, if you can do that and then the wall, and you'll say, oh, but my wall is going to turn black and get inky. You'd be surprised that this can work out without that happening. Obviously, this is a photograph. And by the way, our friend, uh, was it Jay, Rob, I forget who that was. Yeah, I think it was. Who was saying, if you look at a photograph, you should be able to match any of this stuff in here if you have a piece of paper sitting in the same light as this. By the way, forgetting it's a monitor with lights coming through it. <clears throat> So you, you can get this light effect. You can get that. But so there's some level that you can get. If this little, if this little thing on my screen can glow with light, so can your canvas. That's, there's no question that is. These, these are actually values that are reachable, except for the monitor, you know, so a real photograph. <clears throat> if a real photograph produces that, you can produce it. That's all I'm saying. But you can see that you really don't have um, your categories well established. You have this big light here basically being the same as this big light here. It just ain't true, right? You can see this is categorically hugely above in value, this one, right? So that's good. That's important stuff. Um, and then again, you remember when you first start going through this, you say, what's my darkest dark and lightest light? And that's significantly determined by two things. Again, the general tonality of the picture. We don't want the picture to turn inky. We want to maintain this value range as a general impression. And we have to have our lights lit uh, so you're going to pick a darkest dark and lightest light and, a, and the grand middle tone, and you're going to have a look at them, right? You don't have to necessarily fill all this stuff in here to have a look at these three or four big major notes, right? That's a major. I've told you already. That's a major. That's a major. This is a major. This dark is a major with spots. And then uh, this is the other one, right? So you have to set those out there as colors and look at them. Make them pop. This is direct painting. Impressionism will do this. Uh, glazing won't. I mean, you are going to have a different war. And I don't want to tell you, some, call, ask somebody else if he can get those kinds of light effects, then uh, ask him how he does it. <clears throat> so, um, but you see, I write like in a spot like this, how you don't have light because you don't have, you have sogginess. And I'm talking about this edge right here it should be a snappy edge, right? Even if that's a weak light, it's still a light. And you soggy up the edge, it just doesn't have that come forwardness, that come hitherness. Is that the way expression works? <laughs> You wanted to actually do that. So um, so that's value contrast plus edge, right? That's all the game is. 
So whatever value this is, has nothing to do. You don't care about what anything else down here. Up here, this thing serves as the dark against this light. Down here, the, probably something basically the same value, maybe getting slightly darker, serves as the light against this dark and against this dark. So if you don't get the light feeling right there at that edge, you can see it here. If you don't get the feeling of light right here at this edge, and particularly at that spot, if you don't get those in your painting, that's just a major loss of light. And light comes from all these places, uh, and it's, it gets unity by, have them rightly, by having them rightly related to each other. So um, now I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give you this list here, and I'm going to walk you walk us through it. Just I think I've talked about it all. I'll find out in a minute if I have. By the way, these darks right here, and you know what you don't show here as darks, they're making their painting really inky. Your, these values are not actually that dark. The, the darks are just spots, spots, spots here and there. The real dark darks are. So you want to be very thoughtful about, is this dark here really, really darker than this dark in nature? Or is it that much, this part here I'm talking about. But I think this value here is probably the same as that value. Again, your eyes get tricked. So you have to be aware of how many ways your eyes get tricked. Blurring of the eye really does help to categorize better. But just to put it in a, in a, in a box, I'm going to say, do, do you see you need this light effect right here? And all you need is contrast, greater contrast, and a sharp edge. Whatever contrast there is here, don't overdo it. See, that allows you to get more light here. But the fact is, it's, this thing is supposed to be even lighter over here, and you don't have that, right? You can see that this is lighter on the far right side. And by the way, that's a huge thing to notice when you're doing these things. If, notice, if, you're, if your wall is going actually from lighter to darker, that's an important movement. And if the, if the ground appears to be going from lighter to darker, and either, or even from golder to warmer, those are things you need to note as part of your discussion with yourself. What you don't want to do is make it darker here. If you can patently see in the big scheme of a flat wall that this feels lighter and redder than this one does, this feels darker and maybe slightly greener. So this is just, you're not being relational enough, but I think your process is preventing you from doing it, from being that, as relational as you want. But significantly, it's your mentality, not more than the process. So give me a light effect, give yourself a light effect here, give yourself a light effect here, Give yourself a light effect on the toes there. Give yourself one here. Just spot those things around and have a look at them. You could take this painting and set them into this painting. Don't be afraid to wreck a painting. Just set them into this painting. I could I could have done this with a piece of uh, you know with a whites off of the off of the uh, screen here. I wonder if I can do it now. I don't think I know how, but I could do it. I could actually do that right here, and you'd see the light turn on. So. Um, but every place you see a light glowing out of darkness, and I'm talking about even mid-lights, like this here is glowing, this whole thing plus into this, is glowing out of this larger world of darks, right? See the whole thing surrounding it? That feels like a light. Now, yours sort of hints at it, but you don't get there, do you? Now, some of that can be intensity. Warmness will tend to, be, to feel more like light, but intensity will definitely feel more like light. And yellows, you know, the orange side family will tend to do more of a, a light-like vibrancy. Now, another thing that wrecks your effects is to have exaggerated contrast in places like this. You can see if you blur your eye at this, that this value here is not important. It's important for you, in fact, not to turn this into a dark down here. This isn't, in this, in this interpretation, and again, remember, I'm just talking about what you gave me, as if it were true, as if this were the, exactly that. All right. Okay. So, set up with these big, big, these strong lights that have pop, right? Get that pop, get the pop of this, and then get them right to each other, and the world will start working for you. So let's look at the list I have here. I want to extend this indefinitely. So the first thing you have on your list is, do you have your value and value relationships right? And how do you know when they're right? Now, you're not going to say it's site size, right? This matches that, this matches this. You will not get there from there. The truth is that the relationships are, the, that is to say, the truth is literally in the relationships, not in the facts of any of these notes. So you have to say, what shall my lightest light be? And this is called keying, and just if you're just in values. And you should be able to do this just in values. And I say, look at the video from two times ago in the exercise I give students just in values. You can see the light is in their pictures. It's not about color. It's about edges and contrast and comparative contrast, plus the value uh, masses. So values and value relationships, it's the spotting of the values. What's the lightest light? What's the darkest dark? And all the rest of that stuff. And what's the major tonality of the picture? Then it's effects and effects relationships. So effects are contrast plus edge. That's the effect. That produces the effect. And the relationships of all the effects to each other, right? 
And you have to do this systematically, by the way. That's the mercy, of, again, of Impressionism. It gives you a chance to do each one of these things in isolation as you can actually begin to understand it. There's an art of keeping it together, but there's an art of isolating it so you can talk about it. Uh, so this contrast plus edges, you can see that. And the lostness and the unity is produced where things actually ooze into each other. And I'm talking about even if they relatively ooze, you don't go busy, don't go busily drawing the outside of an object where, the, where, they, where things don't show up uh, well in the first place. And that's the issue of the visual order. Can you keep the visual order? That's why I say these are the greatest contrasts. Looking back at this picture, these things, the visual order is the order of the effect. So you can see that the greatest contrasts are over here. And we don't want these contrasts here competing, being competed with either by these, which are real contrasts, or by these guys, which you're making up. Or like, I think you did the edge of his, what did you do down here? He actually made a lostness here that it, it does exist partially, but doesn't leave, leave you with enough to do light with. Uh, yeah, I forget where I was in that. Sorry. So um, that's the visual order, the order of effects. And so, as I said, if you blur your eye and blur it more and blur it more, a whole bunch of stuff will disappear. And two or three things will stick out. Those are in the front of the order. And those things, get those things to pop, glow with light, or they're saying it'll work out for you. Okay? By the way, you can use white and have it just be too dead. So always use color, colored lights. Don't put whites down in isolation because they're going to get darker if you put color into them. And uh, intensity won't necessarily save you from that darkening. So all your values should be well said to each other, but the best way to do it, following Hale's advice again, is to get the color value right and get the one side by side with the, the dark side by side with the light and get the color values right. And then when they meet, cut them sharply and let's see what you got. So there's the classification of values. That's why I was trying to show you the three and five major values, that sort of thing. Keying into the light and to the general tonality. You understood the general tonality was this picture is not an inky picture. It's a middle tone picture. It's a light middle tone picture, in fact, the one we previously looked at, right? That's a light middle tone picture. How do you know? Well, look at all the other pictures on your wall or in other places. You'll, you'll be able to see which, where it lands in the category of is this a dark picture, a middle tone picture, a light picture. You'll be able to land this picture. And I'm talking about this picture as a general blob. Don't start staring into it to understand that idea. Um, but keying is the, uh, is the idea of setting up uh, the values that are going to work to produce the general tonality. And the keying is about what your darkest dark going to be, what your lightest light going to be. And you can only guess at those for a bit. And then you produce contrast and, and relate those two and watch it to see if it's beginning to suggest. Watch your canvas, by the way. Paint. Do, do all the stuff on front of you so you can see it's happening or not happening. Don't do it in your head. The, the, the impression is there's always fully in his eyes all out here, okay? Always fully in your eyes. Am I doing that right? I'm showing the wrong side. Fully in his eyes all out here, okay? Uh, my, my producer's been getting after me for doing gestures all in the place where nobody can see. So, uh, but all out here. All, everything's in your eyes. Everything's out here. All your thinking is out here. Everything. And your canvas itself contains your thoughts, right? And you can look at it and say, that's not what I meant. That's a good thing to be able to do. All right. So then there's this question of testing your values, right? How do you do that, right? Well, that's the same. The, the, the test of the values, whether they're right or not, when you bring them together, is whether they produce the glow of light. And then whether that glow of light is right to the other. So you, but the testing, uh, there's a process called trial and error. There's a search. I like that mentality that uh, I think Tarbell in, brings to this. He uses the word search. I'm searching. And uh, so everybody is searching, but we're searching and, and watching it show up or not show up when we keep making adjustments on the canvas. And keep remembering that to do that, you, all, you have to see the thing as a general impression. You've got to be able to see the thing as a whole. And then do that work out in front of your eyes, watching to see if it begins to be that whole, right, of what you're painting. Um, yeah, and, and that's why I say the, all the elements play a role together. There's no way out of that. You, you, the, even the shape or the, the size of a mass of light will deform the picture. So as time goes along, the size will matter. The edges for the short term, the, the edge producing contrast is all you need to begin to clarify what the keying has got to be like. But eventually, you're, if you make a light mass too big, the picture goes sideways. The general impression goes sideways. If you make certain colors out of intensity in relation to each other. Okay? And there's the question of the intensities of the colors, right? And so that is a factor in producing light. So don't fail to notice. That's why you can't just paint looking over at nature. You've got to see what it's actually doing. And, and in, when it comes to color and light effects and all this stuff, that all these things are together. The sharpness of the edge, the contrast, the intensity, and the red, yellow, or blue, all are in this together. So that's what makes it such a holistic process. 
And again, the visual impression is what drives you. So if you don't have the, a concept of it fixed in your mind and eye, that's a la, you know, Aang. One of the great, you know, minds I think of all time, at least be, we have him being that because of his students, what the quotes that they provided for us. And again, ask me for those if you want them. He was an impressionist, but this, the principles are, are, are significantly the same. Uh, have a concept of the light effect, of the f sense of light of this thing right from the beginning. And then you'll never be satisfied when you're less than that. And you're going to look. And by the way, read, I think it's, I want to tell you, it's Cox. When he talks about technique at the end of the classic point of view, he will say to you, and every single mark you make is either contributing to improving, to getting to that, or it's, or it's taking away, or it's not contributing. Okay. Well, there it is. Uh, thank you for sending those. Um, I don't know what else I can say. I've covered it all, uh, the significant parts. Um, again, thank you all for your comments and your sharing. That was nice uh, the last couple times. You've really been there. And, uh, and uh, keep up the good work. This is, again, this might be beginner part two. I'm not going to call it that because I don't want this to turn into something. But it, is, it actually is a um, uh, address to a person who's calling himself a beginner. And you can see by his work there that that's very much what we all probably did not having no idea that there's such a thing. So now he's hearing about light and he's saying, but mine doesn't glow with light. Again, review this in your mind, but you can see that in general, the intensity and the warmness of the overall effect. So this is the general intensity is very dead in your picture. The general color isn't orange, it's green in your picture, uh, relatively speaking, right? And the general, um, uh, and the specifics of the lights uh, are, you know, the contrasts are just, as a set, they're just not there. So. It's a pretty straightforward thing. Uh, the difference between your dark is dark, all right, the nose here, and the light is light, that difference really should maintain right from the beginning. Anyway, yeah, I think that's enough to talk about. I do pick up on these again and again. Don't I? <laughs> all right, well, I wish you well, Jack, and thank you for the question. And um, for those of the rest of you guys who are thinking of yourselves as beginners, that's what I'm looking for when it comes to, if you want me to make more out of stuff you need to know um, from the beginning. How you work all this stuff in, how you work it out is the other expression. You learn things, and you have, but you have to actually work them out in your life. You have to make them work. Uh, that's going to be in your hands. It always is anyway. If you're working with a teacher, that's in your hands to do. So I've given you tons of good hints here, and uh, I wish you well and try to sort of sort it out and how you're going to work it in. All right. Okay, so next time, uh, in the meantime, have a, have a nice uh, few days. Yeah.